Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about how you can set up lighting in Godot in literally just seconds. But first, a bit of a, an explanation here. I did a tutorial recently about how you can configure your own lighting, so if you want to get into more depth, do check that out. But what we're going to look at is, this is a scene uh, inside of Godot. What you're going to notice here, it, it it's fine. Like it looks pretty good. It's very washed out though. And that is, this is what you get for default lighting. Because what happens here is when you uh, first fire up Godot, it creates a default world environment for you. You can also toggle on a fake sun and it's going to look a whole lot better, but still not overwhelmingly amazing. The default lighting settings in Godot are suboptimal, I think I would say. But the other part that'll really get you here. So I got a camera here set up. And if I go ahead and run this scene, when you actually run your scene, you lose those defaults. So those are editor only and your scene actually looks like this. That That is very confusing to new people that are just coming to Godot because you're like, this isn't how my scene looks. It should look one-to-one -to, -one to the editor. This is what my scene should look like. Why the hell does my scene not look like this? And it comes down to these two toggles at the top. You need to create your own world environment, your own global lighting settings and so on. You create your own sky and so on. This is generally done by creating a world environment setting and going from there. Now I've actually, again, I've done a tutorial on that, walks you through all of that stuff. But today what we're gonna do is focus on a plugin that actually makes this so much easier. So let's just go ahead, turn off both these defaults. So let's say you're, you're in your world, you need to set up your lighting, how the hell am I gonna do this? Well, what you do is you go into your asset library right here, search for Insta, and you will find this guy right here, Insta Realistic Light. Now this is a super simple add-on. This is something that you could probably create yourself in an afternoon. There's, there's not a lot of magic going on here, but what it does, it just makes your world a lot easier. So you don't need to deal with the defaults from the Godot engine, which again, uh, when you play your game, don't even show up. So again, I find this is a very confusing thing. Like, why does my lighting not look like my lighting? Well, it comes down to, again, those two previews that don't apply when you actually run your game. This is, again, I'm curious what your opinion is on this. I understand why they exist, but I would also think that should default, if you don't have a world environment provided, they should be applied to your game as well, which is a very bad UI decision in my humble opinion. But anyways, once you've added an, an enabled, so speaking of the enabled part, it's basically come on in here, go to project settings, go to plugins, and then turn on instant realistic light like so, and then we'll show you the results. So here we go, no lighting in the scene, and we'll go ahead, we'll click this new button that shows up in the 3D viewport, the instant realistic light, and presto, that's it. That's all you gotta do. Now you have realistic lighting for your scene, and you go ahead and run your game, and now your game is going to have Good lighting. There you go. As you can see, now this is, again, it's not doing a hell of a lot here. Uh, you'll notice here it's created a world environment for you. This is actually a scene. Drill down into the scene, you're gonna see there is a world environment. It is doing the default setups for you. So until you know how to set this stuff up yourself, this can just easily create a pre-configured one with uh, results that you may or may not like in it. So here you see uh, it's set up, up the sky, set up features for the sky, turned on filmic tone mapping, um, screen space ambient occlusion, uh, SDFGI. So it sets up default settings for you. And then on top of that, it is creating a directional light and a reflection probe. And for the directional light, it is turning shadows on. These are things that you probably don't know how to do initially as an absolute beginner. And this will just make it so boom, I have lighting. I don't need to deal with that crap. And it's going to give you an out of the box experience that is much more pleasant than what you're going to get if you don't have uh, any of this enabled. Again, I think this is one of those things that should just be uh, the norm. So by the way, you can come in here, you drill down into this project. So for example, I could come here to this environment and I could switch from filmic to aces if I wished. Uh, we're gonna get slightly darker tone mapping here and we'll switch back and then you're gonna see the results of the, uh, the film mapping there. Again, this environment is imported from Unreal Engine. Uh, it's, uh, it's a cool environment available in Humble right now. The link is down below. So if you wanna bring this in, super simple to bring assets in by the way, but you can see the difference in lighting there. So once again, all this is really doing is creating a new entity in your world and configuring pretty close to the default presets that you're getting here. But again, the key thing here is when you actually run your game, you are going to get the lighting that you see, which is one of those things I find very confusing with the implementation that you've got in uh, the way Godot works right now. So again, here is the, the lighting that it's set up in here. So I'll get rid of it, give it a second. There is your default lighting that you're gonna get in Godot. And there is the default lighting uh, with uh, a default sky created for you, et cetera, the sunlight and so on. 
Uh, so it's again, super simple to use, basically just basically drop it in and it will create it for you. That's all it is. It's a very simple add-on, but it solves a problem in Godot that in my opinion probably should be a problem, but I can understand why the Godot team did it the way they did. I can also understand why so many new users are going to come in. They're going to design their initial game. They're going to have, uh, you know, the default lighting enabled. They're going to work with it. In the editor with these two settings on, they're going to think that the world should look exactly like this. Like this is what, when they run your game, you should get this result. But the reality is when they run their game, they're getting this. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a very confusing thing. So uh, this at least will get you over the hump of setting up your initial lighting settings in just one click. And again, I do have that tutorial which will show you everything you need to go ahead and set it up yourself. So when you move beyond that step, I do have you covered there as well. So this is the asset. It's Instant Realistic Lighting by uh, Soichalar. Uh, this is an MIT licensed thing, basically. It's like, available in the asset lib store. Uh, we've got the uh, Epic Environments Mega Bundle. This is what we used for the demo. I exported out this guy, the Medieval Street Environment. Uh, environments export across engines very, very well. I've done a number of articles on how you can actually do that. But if you wanna get what I showed you in today's video, uh, you're gonna find, we actually end up looking uh, very similar uh, from what Unreal Engine does to Godot. So the thing is, Unreal Engine's default lighting, and lighting in general, to be honest, is just so much beyond Godot in my humble opinion. So it looks initially quite a bit better, but you can make it look very similar. Uh, and of course, if you wanna learn more about uh, Godot lighting, I have done this tutorial, Learning Godot 4.x, 3D lighting, shadows, global illumination, world environments, plus plus tutorial, covers everything you need to know to set these things up yourself. But in the meantime, as you're, especially if you're just starting out, the idea of having an instant button that just does it for you, eh, that's pretty appealing. So that's what we're looking at today, instant one-click lighting in the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think, comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.